All right. So we're going to go through uh, a few examples here of how do we get to pH. Uh, and I'm actually going to change change number here real quick. Let's see. Let's make this. I guess we'll start. We'll start with this one. This is a good one to start with. It's fine. All right. So, if we want to, our this one sort of lays out the progression for you to as far as what what are the the steps that we might look for. Um, and in this case, we're starting from um, an incomplete reaction. So if we want to start by finding the complete reaction, it's actually not totally necessary um, in this case. If we want to find the, if our final thing we're trying to find is the pH at the end of the reaction, we don't actually really need to know what the rest of what the reaction's making because our strong acid and our strong base are reactants. So whatever's left over at the end is going to be what actually determines the final pH. But it's still a good uh, good practice to write the complete reaction here. And with these acid base reactions, it's to my mind, at least, it's it's significantly simpler than the precipitation reactions because the precipitation reactions, you always have to go look at the solubility rules, see if you made any combinations that don't dissolve. With the acid-base reactions, you're just always looking for what's going to give up a hydrogen and, what's, and what is it giving it to. And then you just write the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So in this case, if you have something that's named as an acid, as one of your reactants, you can be pretty sure that that's going to be your acid. So nitric acid is going to be losing an H plus, and that means it has to go somewhere. You're not going to stick an H plus onto lithium ion, right? Because lithium's already positive. You're not going to stick another H plus onto that. There's no attractive force there. So you're just looking for something that has a negative charge or at least a lone pair that can accept the H plus. And the most common thing we see is hydroxide in these reactions. So you've got an acid and you've got a hydroxide. Your hydroxide is going to act as the base. Your acid acts as the acid. So drawing the products is just a matter of taking the acid and you're going to take away the H plus from it. So that's what makes it the acid, right? It's giving away the H plus. So the conjugate base of nitric acid is just nitrate. And the conjugate acid of the hydroxide, once when you give the hydroxide an H plus, you're going to get water. And technically, for the sake of having things balanced, we want the total equation. We, we wouldn't just leave it as nitrate. We have to have that lithium still in there. So really, instead of just making nitrate, we would write it as lithium nitrate aqueous, because the lithium didn't really do anything, but it was there. And it's still there. It's still going to be balancing out the charge on that from that nitrate now. Um, but as far as using our, our vocabulary that we were talking about with the acid-base reactions, the hydroxide would be the base, the nitric acid would be the acid, which would make the nitrate be the conjugate base. which makes the, the water is going to be the conjugate acid. 
the base turns into the conjugate acid, acid turns into the conjugate base. Right, so um, it's a little bit more open-ended than doing the precipitation reactions, but on which can make it seem a little bit more daunting to complete these reactions to write the products, because you know at least with the precipitation reactions it's complicated. But once you know how to look at those solubility rules, it's the same thing every time, right? And there's only so many combinations you could make. Acid-base reactions are simpler in concept, but a little bit more open-ended, which can make them seem more intimidating. Just remember, all you're looking for with these, if you've got an acid and a base, you're just going to move an H plus from one thing to the other. All right, so That's all there is to this first section. You don't even need to, you don't need to even label them to just answer the question of write the complete reaction. Writing the complete reaction would just be would be that when you're done with your complete reaction. Ideally with your subscripts as well to say whether we're talking about solids and liquids or solutions, et cetera. Um, but since I wasn't given on the reactant side, I would not, if this was given to you on a test, I would not be super strict about having the, um, the phases labeled since I didn't give you the phases on the left-hand side. All right, questions on that one or thus far? Okay, so, the rest of this problem is aimed at finding the pH. If we want to find the pH, nothing on the product side is a strong acid or a strong base, which is why this type of reaction is frequently called a neutralization reaction. You start with a strong acid and a strong base, and you wind up with, with neither. Or even if you have weak acids and weak bases, you're products are going to be weaker acids and bases than what you started with. So when you, an acid-base reaction is frequently called a neutralization reaction for that reason. And if we want to know the pH, the pH is going to be controlled by either hydroxide concentration or strong acid concentration. So whichever of these is left over, we just find the concentration of it and then use that to get to pH. All right, so just like any of these stoichiometry problems, our first step is put it into moles. Um, and this, <laughs> and this reaction is probably looking a little familiar since we use the same reaction with different numbers for our uh, quiz question. So same process. Find out how many moles of lithium hydroxide you have. Find out how many moles of, of nitric acid you have. So for the lithium hydroxide, you're given a mass. So that means we're going to use the molecular weight, which we came up with was 23.948 grams is one mole of lithium hydroxide. So I get 0 0.0136. And our process for the nitric acid is going to be very similar to what we had before, except we have a different concentration. So 
125.0 milliliters, 1,000 milliliters, one liter, and one liter is 0 0.100 moles. All right, so again, that right there tells us what the limiting reactant and the identity of the excess reactant, if we, we still have to do some subtraction to figure out how many moles of excess we have. But with these acid-base reactions, things will generally wind up getting balanced um, as with coefficients of one. One lithium hydroxide to one nitric acid makes one water, and one lithium hydrox or lithium nitrate. So if everything's one to one, we know that we're using them up at the same rate. And figuring out the limiting reactant is as easy as looking what what do you have less of. The only time with these neutralization reactions that you're going to have to worry about not having a one-to-one -one ratio is if your hydroxide, if your hydroxide has um, more than one hydroxide per mole. So, for instance, if you had calcium hydroxide, calcium's got a plus two charge, so calcium hydroxide has that formula. Then you're going to wind up with a two to one ratio because there's two hydroxides for every one, um, for every one mole of calcium hydroxide. So you're going to wind up with it needing to get balanced and having to do the stoichiometry step. Um, just so you're aware, that's where just assume it, just looking at what you have less of is going to break down. If that happens, you then have to show um, whether you have twice as much of the reactant that's being used up faster. All right, and in the interest of neatness and space, I'm gonna zoom in here and rewrite this. All right. So if we're trying to find moles of excess reactant and then move on all the way to pH, we're going to start by just figuring out what's left over. We know that we're going to run out of the nitric acid first. You can say 0 0.0125 moles of HNO3. And for every one mole nitric acid is one mole of lithium hydroxide used, 0 0.0125 moles used. And if we do that subtraction, we're going to get our moles of lithium hydroxide left over.
And then, so that'll give us moles of hydroxide left. So to this point, this is all just more of the same, right? Nothing, nothing new at the up to this point. Um, what's going to happen once we get the concentration is what's going to seem new and confusing at first because it's dealing with logs. And if you're like most of the classes that I've taught on this subject, um, logs are mostly forgotten and scary. I think would be the best way to describe the way most of my students think of logs. Um, so we'll go over some of the rules for logs and how to do that, but that's getting there is nothing, nothing new. So if we want our concentration of hydroxide at the end, and so let me back up. If we want the pH, that was negative log of H3O plus concentration is one of only two, two equations we know that has pH in it. The other equation that we know is pH plus pOH equals 14. So if we have, and again, let me rewrite this for clarity so we're not on top of everything else. If we had excess acid, if we had excess strong acid, we would just plug our concentration of, of strong acid into the pH equation, take the negative log of what's left over, and we're done. That's our pH. If we have leftover base instead, we have to go this other route, where we're going to start by finding pOH and then using that to find pH. And so remember, pOH is just the same formula as pH, except with hydroxide instead of H3O. Plus. So our next step here is just to find our concentration of hydroxide. We've got moles of hydroxide left over. Last step on our quiz question was take the moles, turn it to concentration. That's because I was setting you up for this problem, where you're going to take the moles left over, turn it to a concentration, then take the negative log of it. All right, so our final volume is still going to be 125 milliliters. So our concentration of hydroxide is just going to be moles of hydroxide left divided by the volume in liters. we get 0 0.0088 moles per liter. Which now that's everything we need to find pOH. The pOH is the negative log of 0 0.088. I'm just going to switch to whiteboard here so I have room. So just make sure you're using the log base 10 button on your calculator, not the natural log. You don't want LN. Um, so that's going to be nat negative log of 0 0.0088. 
and units get a little bit funky with logs. There's actually different sig fig rules um, for logs, but I'm not going to make you memorize them at this point. Um, so just for pH and pOH, always just go to the hundredths place. Um, always write it down to the hundredths place. So when you do the negative log 0 0.0088, get pOH is 2.06. So regardless of how many sig figs we have on our concentration, just always write it to the hundredths place. That's usually going to be the right number of sig figs anyway. So we're almost there now. Not that much longer than finding concentration of excess reactant. Take the negative log of whatever's left over. And then if it was pH, if the, if the what was left over was the acid. When you take the negative log, you've got the pH and you're done. If what was left over is the hydroxide, we're just going to plug it in here and solve for pH. So we'll get. I can do the math in my head. All right, so regardless of where you start and what your excess reactant is, you're going to go through one of two pathways to figure out pH. For these acid-base reactions, in this class, we're only dealing with strong acids and strong bases. So it's all just stoichiometry. Find out your excess reactants. If your excess reactant is the acid, take your negative log and you're done. If it's not, you take your negative log and then do this. And then you're done. And I realize we just keep building on these stoichiometry problems that you guys are still probably a little bit shaky on confidence-wise to begin with. And when we keep adding more and more stuff to that, um, that can make it seem like it's a much trickier problem than it is. Still the same stuff we've been working on, just with a log at the end. All right, so I'm going to, so here's one that you do have to balance. I told you to watch out for calcium hydroxide, right? Um, see if you can get to pH and pOH for this. And then after that, I'll work through that so you can check your answers. Then we'll talk about how you can turn PO, P, um, turn a concentrate or a pH into a concentration or vice versa. So you're looking for excess react, balance it, look for excess reactant, and use that to fill in pH or pOH. Um, quick question about that one. I see that it says in the problem, it says 0 0.748, but then below it says 2.8, which one should we use? Well, it looks like I was just trying to give you excess extra practice problems. Uh, no, <laughs> I probably forgot to update that because I usually look at the, the bottom section. So. Okay. Um, use, a, use the numbers from the bottom section, and then you do have another okay. practice problem if you wanted to.
All right, so I've started filling in some of this. Start by balancing. Um, and then figure out how many moles we have everything. It's always our first step with stoichiometry problems, right? It's an excess reactive problem, theoretical yield problem, doesn't matter. We need to start by figuring out how many moles we have of it. So for the calcium hydroxide, that's just going to be a molecular weight calculation. And then for the hydroiodic acid, um, we're given one liter in a molarity. So mathematically, that's going to be pretty easy to do the math there. One liter has 0 0.020 moles. So, and we have one liter, so we must have 0 0.020 moles. All right, so then the question just becomes, what's going to run out first? We're using the hydro <clears throat> hydroiodic acid twice as fast, but we also have more than twice as much. So looking at this, we can be pretty sure the calcium hydroxide is going to run out first, but it's still, since we have to calculate how much is used up anyway, let's show our work we can say 0 0.00983 moles of calcium hydroxide. And for every one mole calcium hydroxide, two moles HI used. And for the sake of sig fig, so that after rounding, it doesn't look like everything cancels out, I'm going to throw an extra zero on our moles of HI. Because if we didn't, after we wind up rounding and doing the subtraction, we're going to wind up with no, no with uh, zero moles of anything left over, which it means it's hard to find the pH. Um, so we'll throw an extra zero on there for the sake of sig figs. All right, so if we know how many moles we have and we know how many moles are used, we just do a subtraction, 0 0.0200 minus 0 0.0197. After we round it, we get 0 0.0000. .00 moles of HI left. Just from taking moles we started with and subtracting the moles used. All right, so lucky for us in this one, this actually simplifies things a fair bit because if we are just looking for the pH, um, we have acid left over. So if pH is negative log of H3O plus concentration, as long as we're dealing with strong acids, which we're, is all we're going to be doing in this class, as long as we're dealing with strong acid, we can just assume that the concentration of H3O plus is the same as our concentration of acid. So all we need to do is find our concentration of HI at the end to find, uh, and then take the negative log to get our pH. 
So concentration of HI is just moles of HI left or excess divided by volume of the solution. And we had a solid being mixed with one liter of solution, right? So our volume is just one. So that means our concentration of HI excess is just 0 0.0004 or 3 over 1.00 liters. So in other words, our concentration is 0 0.0003. So to turn that into the pH, you just plug it in down here. The log of 0.0003, it's gonna be a negative number. So you drop the negative, you get 3.52. for our pH. Which means we also have everything we need to fill out the rest of it here. We actually, our concentration of H3O plus, we already did that, 0 0.0003 molar. If we wanna find pOH, we, use, we basically do the same thing we, to go from pOH to pH. We did 14 equals pH plus pOH. So we're just going to do the same thing here. So a quick subtraction, 14 minus 3.52. get 10.48. So if all this question asked was, what's the pH at the end, we're already done. If the, if the question says, fill out this entire box or this entire table of pH, pOH, and these concentrations, we have one more step to do. Right? And that's the only one that we haven't done before. And it's basically undoing a pH. So if pH is taking the negative log of something, then if we wanted to solve, so pOH is negative log of, hydro, of H3O plus concentration. If I want to solve this for H3O plus concentration, you're going to wind up solving it for, and actually I clean that up. I mixed mixed up my formulas. And so we're talking about pOH. If we want to solve for concentration of, of hydroxide, we just do it like we would do solve for X. Um, move start by moving a negative sign over. So we get negative pOH equals log of hydroxide. And to undo a log, you raise both sides to the power that's the base of the log. So the log, this is log base 10. So we do 10 to the power of each side. Then the log and the 10 cancel out. So we wind up, so when we solve for this, we get Concentration of hydroxide equals 10 to the negative pOH. 
if we did the same thing with hydronium with H3O plus, we would get 10 to the negative pH. So as long as, like I, I mentioned before, as long as we have any one of the boxes in this table, we can fill out the rest of them by using these, these relationships. So if we actually want to get a number for hydroxide, it's going to be a really small number, 10 to the negative 10.48. Winds up being 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 11 moles per liter. So very close to zero, but still technically there is some tiny amount of hydroxide present. Um, and that's just a result of that equilibrium reaction that we talked about, that, which is where that pH scale came from in the first place. All right, so this is some math heavy practice here and we'll keep working with this, but just remember it's just an excess reactant problem with this extra little section at the bottom. So if you lock up on the test and totally panic and uh, can't figure out how to do pH at all, as long as you can figure out the moles of excess reactant or concentration of the excess reactant, you can still get most of your points. Right, so don't let the fact that there's logs involved throw you off, make you think it's trickier than it is. It's just an excess reactive problem. We've been working on those for weeks now, even if they still need more practice. Questions about anything I did uh, on this problem? Those last 10 minutes are the tricky ones, right? Um, because that's when we start getting into pH, and that's what we have less experience with right now. So even if the getting back to your concentration of pOH was tricky, just remember that your pH and pOH is just going to be based on what's, what's more important is that you can go from a concentration to pH or from a concentration to pOH because I think all of you can do this math. If you can get pH or pOH, you can get the other one. Right? That's, just, that's subtraction, pretty, pretty comfortable algebra to solve for pH if you have pOH. Right? So that last step though to go from um, is, is the trickiest one where we're undoing it. So, and that's out of what we did on this page, that's the least important skill out of this page, right? So we'll keep working on it so you can get the hang of it. But if you can get to your POH from these problems, or sorry, your pH from these problems, that's the most important skill here. All right, well, we have this recorded um, and I will post this as soon as it's done rendering on it and everything on my computer. Um, and I'm not really gonna do the lab intro at this point because we, we haven't touched the gases yet. Um, if you guys are comfortable with the gas, with the lobster simulations, you know how they um, sort of walk you through everything. You don't need a ton of advanced knowledge to be able to understand more or less what they're doing or at least get through them with a grade. Um, but it might be, you will probably get more out of it if you wait to start that one until, until after lecture on Wednesday. Um, so that's what I would recommend and just go ahead and have a short lab I still went for an hour, but um, compared to uh, the three hours that are scheduled. Any questions before I stop recording? <laughs>